Wow. I, I Thank you, Rough Cloud. Yeah, I feel like that every word that I would just add will ruin the amazing words and welcome that I just received from Rav Claudia and from uh, this place. Um, I'm very excited to be here. I'm excited for many reasons, but first of all, uh, I used to do these kind of talks a lot and we kind of like forgot that COVID was with us for, many, for a few years and I stopped doing it and that's the first time I'm meeting people at that kind of setting, so it's, you know, life is going back and things that we used to do is happening again. And I'm also excited because I look around this room and I see many friendly faces. People that I've, know, I've known for a while or people that I should have known for a while. Uh, people that uh, have supported us or knew about our work. And I'm also excited because I think that voices coming here from Israel could be very confusing. Um, unresting. And in many ways, the voice that I want to bring today is actually a voice of optimism, of ability to create change, to influence, to impact. Because that's actually what's happening on the ground. We were just at a, a small study tour of visitors from the United States uh, to Israel. And, and you know, when they came into the room, I, I was sitting there and I was welcoming them. And I saw their face in kind of like, faces kind of like quite depressed when we started. And, and we, the Israelis, we or, rec or introduced ourselves, we were quite excited about the moment. We were full with optimism. So in a way, this weekly Parsha, and I'm not a rabbi in any way, or I didn't mean to deal with the weekly Parsha, but it came to me, I didn't choose it, right? Well, it's about boundaries, right? About, the, about limits. And I think that in many ways, the political situation or the current government in Israel is about a government or a political leadership that has lost its boundaries. Its moral boundaries, its geographical boundaries, its ideological boundaries in many ways. You know, even through, where, you know, I don't know how many of you, but probably many of you have, follow, have been following NIF, and we've been showing the trajectory trajectory of what our previous president, Professor Nomi Chazan, used to call or still calls democratic recession that Israel has gone through in the last at least 20 years. We saw the pictures very clear when they started to go after minorities in Israel, after civil society organizations, of course, as the occupation became much more of a permanent reality on the ground. And we also knew that strong civil organizational capacity to answer these realities will be the only thing that will actually stop the reality. So what are the boundaries that I'm talking about that this government is actually um, giving up on? One is the most famous one, the one that everyone is talking about, right? We're looking at the judicial reform, as they call it, or the judicial revolution, as we call it. The executive branch of the, of the Israeli government, of the, or the Israeli regime, is trying to take over every element of government. The judiciary, the Knesset, all elements, but mainly the judiciary. We have to remember, Israel has no constitution, its legislature has only one branch. We don't have states. So basically the only, the only thing that limits the power of the executive branch is the courts. And that's exactly why they want to go after the courts at this moment, because they lost the boundaries. In the past, they were looking towards that. But even if you look at Netanyahu's government through the years, you, you would all, always, always want to have a kind of like more centrist, centrist left party within his government in order to create these kind of like limits. Not anymore. The current government is what they called Yamin Male Male, extreme right, right wing government that has no limit. Actually, Netanyahu. The indicted prime minister of the state of Israel is the kind of like centrist limit of the government. 
So first of all, they try to stop any kind of limitation or, or go any, uh, against any kind of limitations or, or, or balance of power. The, f the second thing, of course, is the geographic boundaries. We're all talking about the legal revolution, but there is another revolution that's happening on the ground as we speak here. And it's the, the de facto annexation of the West Bank happening. They try to do it during the Trump era with calling it annexation. They, they realize from their own reasons they can't do it. But what's happening now on the, on the ground is de facto annexation. Minister Bezalel Smotrich, the Minister of Finance, has received under his jurisdiction all, the entire control over the civil elements of the West Bank, meaning settlers only. Two complete legal system operating in the West Bank under this government. If in the past people could say that the occupation is a temporary reality, it's harder to say it in the current reality because it's so public. And the last one is actually a different kind of boundaries. Those who I think will, you'll feel very familiar with. This government is trying to import or is in the process of importing a lot of the reactionary conservative ideas that are, are developing in this country into the Israeli political discourse when it comes to women's rights or LGBTQI rights or abortions that were never an issue in the political discourse in Israel. Free guns, more and more guns, that's their, that's their solution for insecurity. Definitely in what they called mixed cities around Israel, Lod, Ramle, places in which Jews and Arabs live together. Not taking responsibility over a reality in which Arab citizens of Israel paying an extreme price of, of neglections of years, killing each other. And, not, and, and no one takes responsibility. So this is the side of no boundaries, right? But also if you've been following NIF, you knew that we've always, sometimes people looked at us as we, as we were ridiculous, right? Like, what are you talking about? The reality is so surreal. You know, they're going after human rights organizations. They're trying to stop uh, Arab, Arab citizens of Israel of, of, of presenting their own identity. And we always said, and we still say, the power of the people, the ability to organize, the ability to come together will make a significant change. And to be honest, we almost lost hope. But a few weeks ago, when I was walking around the, the um, demonstration on Kaplan Street in, in Tel Aviv, by the way, that happens in Atania, in Beersheba, or in Jerusalem, all through the country, in places that you'd never imagine. And I was walking around, uh, around that with one of our board members, Dr. Yael Sternal, a, a mega expert in, in American history, and her dad was Professor Zev Sternal, uh, pr probably the, the most famous uh, researcher of fascism. And we looked at each other, smiling, and we said two things. First of all, this is incredible. Hundreds of thousands of people going to the streets and not screaming corruption and not screaming anything else, but they are saying democratia. We have a lot of work to do with understanding what does it mean when they scream democratia. But this is the word that they're screaming, democratia, democracy. Understanding that there is a true risk for their own democracy. And the second thing we actually said, you know what? This time, it's not only on our shoulders. For too long, we felt at NIF that we've been carrying this very, very heavy 
situation on our own shoulders. But today, the Israeli liberal camp has woken up. And it's not willing anymore to accept lies or, <clears throat> or promises or things that are clear. There is a lot of work to do, to do there, right? It's, it's, it's far, far, far from perfect. And, and the, the language that they use, and sometimes we disagree about the messaging, but it doesn't really matter. The fact that people walk up and literally stopped the legislation against the judiciary was only because people here, I mean at home, but also here around the United States, go and demonstrate and speak up and not being afraid. Not being afraid anymore that someone would excuse, accuse them of being a lefty or someone would accuse them to be a self-hating Jew or some, someone would accuse them and whatever. All the tricks and the shticks are gone. We're not afraid of them anymore. We know that we have one fight to fight, and that's the fight of the soul on the soul of this country. And if we lose it, we lost it for the, entire, the entirety of the state of Israel. But we also have a chance to win it. We are not there to go back to the good old days, as some of them do. We want to see a full democracy, full equality, partnership between the people of Israel. We, see, we want to see the end of the occupation. We want to see freedom for Israelis and for Palestinians. And we have now the opening to have this voice heard. You know, being an nif -er and definitely being in my position for some, sometimes in, in in my last six years was kind of like to feel a bit isolated. And just lately I went, walked on, on, in one of these demonstrations, this time in Jerusalem, and all of a sudden see people that Beneinu, yeah, I'm gonna say here with an open mic, cause I don't, cause it's here. That they were not very keen to say hello to me in, 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 in some periods of, of this struggle. All of a sudden coming to me, hugging me, speaking up as, it, as we've been part of the same struggle for so many years. I'm so proud and happy about it. That's the moment that we've been waiting for. We're not here to say they were not here when we fought it. We're actually here to welcome them. And what, what's our job is to connect all of these elements that I just brought up. There are those who speak up about the judicial reform, let them, let them speak about the judicial reform. There are those who are keen to speak and, and this amazing protest on, on issues of you, uh, women's rights, let them do that. LGBT rights, Palestinian citizens of Israel, the anti-occupation bloc, and we are gonna be there to connect the dots, to tell one joint story about what does it mean when you scream democracy. A few weeks ago when, when the big demonstration, when, when Netanyahu is fired is, uh, is, min, uh, is the defense minister Gallant and then you brought him back, um, I was sitting at home and I got a, a text from our previous president of the board, Professor David Myers, he's a historian of of, of Jewish studies, one of the, I think, one of, one of the most prominent internationally, but definitely in this country. And he goes like, are you in Kaplan? Are you on the streets? It was like 11 o'clock. I was like, David, I have two young daughters. I'm tired. And he's like, I'm not telling you that as an NIF executive. I'm telling you as an historian, you have to be there. If you're not going to be there on the street, you'll regret it. I took my bike, you know, I took my bike and I drove it, rode my bike to Kaplan. And I really felt something else. I really felt that, that I'm, I'm there part, being part of history. And the next day, um, my daughter went to Gan, she's three. And all of a sudden, get, you know, the first thing that you do when you get you sign up for, for, a, for a 
school in Israel, you join like a WhatsApp group. Before even asking your name, they're, they're adding you to this WhatsApp group, right? So I get this WhatsApp, WhatsApp uh, video, and it's an English gun. It says democracy, like in big letters, and they're, they're screaming, democracy, yeah, the, the three-year-old. And, 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 and I was super excited, and I'm sending it to Daniel Sokach, our CEO, and he goes, do you see who is leading them in, in screaming democracy? I was like, mm, yeah. It's actually Eliana, my daughter. Uh, I was like, okay, I did something right in that. <laughs> and that's the reason I'm actually here. We have this year, this time, this moment to fight for the future of our children, but in many ways for the future of your children and grandchildren to recreate the state of Israel. And I want to say, and I'll speak about it more, I'm very proud also at the history of the New Israel Fund for creating the notion of vibrant civil society. Because when you speak to experts on, on this matter, when you compare Israel to Poland, Hungary, and other places, the one thing that dif distinguishes Israel the, in the, from these countries is the level of public and civil engagement, and civil, the level of civil society. And NIF was there in the last 40 years to create it. We're not taking credit for the current, for anything, but we're saying there is a process. Nothing happens in a moment. That's one thing. And the second thing that I'm extremely proud of, and I do it because, I, because of my daughter who's screaming Demokratia, I think that we're able to create a really, if one may say so, smart strategic answer to the current reality. They take advantage of the creativity, different voices, spirit of the Israeli public, and allowing it to thrive and happen. And on the other hand, protecting this space, because we know that when a regime sees, and you know, speaking about it next to Rav Claudia, it's like, like I feel humbled. Um, but when the regime sees a strong civil society that disobeys and fights against it, it will try to crack it down. And we need to be ready. So this, our civil society is strong enough to do so. And the last thing I want to say, let's not forget strategic future planning answering the question, when you speak about democracy, what does it mean? What kind of a democracy do we want? What are the thoughts, the alternative, that we as a movement have to offer the Israeli public? So we didn't touch even a penny of our investment in this kind of work, because despite the fact we had to increase our funding to these amazing initiatives that are growing bottom up, and despite the fact that we know today, because we are there, that we need to protect it so it actually still exists, we also need to keep on investing at the future and the ideological elements of this society. So that's where we are. In a way, in the worst of all times of the state of Israel, but on the other hand, in the greatest time of history. We are living history and I'm here to ask you to be our partners, not more and not less, because there is so much we can do together. And that's my call for this afternoon. Thank you.